Thank you for joining this session. It's an introduction to the assessment of drug effects for the NIH principles of clinical pharmacology. This module, module five, the assessment of drug effects, has five sessions, biomarkers of drug effects, pharmacodynamic and pharmacokinetic modeling of data, disease progression models, role of pharmacodynamics in drug development, and immunotherapeutics. Well, if the definition of clinical pharmacology is the science of drug actions in humans and their optimal clinical use in patients, then that begs the big question, how can we measure drug effects in humans? Well, that large question can be broken down into two main subcomponents. The first is, how can we measure the effects of humans on drugs? When a drug is administered to a patient, what does the human body actually do to the drug? The second is, how can we measure the effects of drugs on humans? What are the clinical effects, and how can we infer those from certain other indirect measurements? To illustrate the importance of the measurement of the effect of drugs, I thought I'd talk about how common drugs are. There are nearly 12,000 drugs, about a third of which have been approved. Most of those drugs are small molecule drugs, like acetaminophen or ibuprofen about 10,000. There are almost 1,700 biotechnology-related drugs or protein-related drugs. And there are over 9,000 targets for those drugs that have been approved. And that's an average of two and a half drug targets per drug. And it ranges up to as many as 10. About two out of every three people in the United States have used a prescription drug within the past 12 months. And drugs account for about 9% of the overall health spending. So it's important that we be able to measure the effects of drugs accurately. The first topic relates to biomarkers in health. When we administer a drug to a patient, we need to be able to measure something accurately and objectively and reliably, and that is called a biomarker. And ideally, a biomarker should be reflective of the actual biology going on in the human or the disease itself. Examples of biomarkers include sweat chloride, which can be used in the diagnosis of cystic fibrosis, Blood glucose, which can be used for diagnosis and monitoring of patients with diabetes. Blood pressure, again, diagnosis and monitoring uh, in patients who have hypertension. And the CEA, which can be used in the diagnosis of patients with colon cancer. And fibrinogen, which can be used to uh, determine the prognosis of patients with COPD. Pharmacokinetics is defined as the study of the time course of drugs in the body. And the main components are referred to as ADME, and that includes absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. Clinical pharmacokinetics is the application of pharmacokinetic principles to the use of drugs in patients. Pharmacokinetics requires the ability to accurately and precisely measure the concentration of drugs in either blood, tissue, or any other bodily fluid. Commonly, pharmacokinetics are influenced by the route of administration. If the drug is given by intravenous route, it has a quick effect. If it's given by oral or topical administration, it may have a delayed onset of effect. And it's important to be able to characterize the quantity of the drug in the system at varying times. Measurements can be made after administering either a single dose of the drug or multiple doses of a drug throughout a range of doses, including low, medium, and high. This is an example of an arbitrary drug on the y-axis, you have a drug concentration and the x-axis, time. And you can see the line shows the drug being absorbed into the body, being distributed, 
and eventually eliminated by the drug by metabolism or excretion. And that drug has an area under the plasma concentration curve that is reflective of the overall effect of the drug. Pharmacodynamics, then, is the re relationship between drug concentration at the site of action and the resulting effect. It includes the time course and the intensity of the therapeutic effect or the adverse effect. And we can address the potency of a given drug within a class of similar drugs. Commonly, pharmacodynamics is exhibited by a typical S-shaped curve. At low concentrations, measured on the x-axis, we can have a given effect, and that's measured on the y-axis. At very low concentrations, you can see that there is no appreciable effect. And then, as the concentration increases, that effect increases dramatically until a plateau is hit. And uh, one of the common parameters that we use is the effective concentration in 50% of the individuals, or 50% of the effect, and the EC50. What is the role of pharmacodynamics in drug development? Drug development is a natural extension of pharmacodynamics. The first step is proof of mechanism, which is the effects of a drug on a given drug target. And the second step is the proof of concept, which is the consequences of the drug in the body. All phases of drug development use pharmacodynamics, from the preclinical to the clinical and the post-marketing effects of the drug. Disease progression models have been dramatically improving over the last one to two decades. And these models involve math to quantitatively determine the change in the disease status over time. We can compare the natural progression of the disease with the treatment effect, and we commonly use biomarkers, and we link them with pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic data. Pharmacodynamics can be used to improve drug development productivity. And finally, we can use disease progression models in the application of cost-effectiveness and genome-wide analyses. Here is an example of a hypothetical drug for disease modeling. The y-axis has the disease severity and the x-axis has time. And the solid line depicts the increase in severity of the disease over time. The dotted line has to do with a drug effect that might temporarily reduce symptoms. And you can see the symptoms improve when the drug is given, and they revert back to a baseline when the drug is taken away. A second option for a drug effect on disease uh, severity is where a drug modifies a given severity of the disease. And you can see that by the dashed line uh, having a decreased slope compared to the natural course of disease. Immunotherapeutics, also called biologic response modifiers or biologics, have a dramatically increased role in healthcare in the past recent years. They can be used to treat disease by altering the immune system. And there's two effects that can occur. One is by activating the immune system or enhancing or amplifying it when we're trying to get rid of something bad, like a cancer cell. And the other effect is suppressing or reducing or blocking the immune system when it is in overdrive uh, function. And that would be an inflammatory condition like rheumatoid arthritis or uh, inflammatory bowel disease or psoriasis. The advantage of immunotherapies is that they have the potential for greater effectiveness or decreased side effects because they are targeted to a narrow uh, therapeutic role. We can combine the immunotherapies with traditional treatments and again have improved effectiveness or decreased toxicity. The downside is that these drugs may be associated with their own unique adverse effects. 
Here is an example of a monoclonal antibody. The top portion of the antibody is the variable or FAB region, and that is what binds to the antigen. The fixed portion or FC region of the antibody does not change. These monoclonal antibodies may inhibit inflammatory reactions like cytokine release, interleukin release, and they may inhibit cellular function as well and activation like T cells, macrophages, fibroblasts, and osteoclasts. Common examples of immunotherapeutic drugs include CAR T cell therapy for cancer, cancer vaccines, which can prevent cancers or treat them after they occur, viruses that can be used to treat cancers, and anti-tumor necrosis factor drugs used in inflammatory conditions. And finally, the checkpoint inhibitors, which have dramatically increased over the last few years. So in summary, it is imperative that we accurately measure drug effects. And we can measure drug effects either directly or indirectly. Assessing drug effects plays an essential role throughout the drug development process. Thank you for attending this session.